What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today I lost some video footage. <laughs> so I lost the intro to this coffee here. So I've put these photos here for you to see. I was sent this coffee uh, for review which is super amazing um, because it is spoiler delicious. Uh, so this comes from Kitty Cat Loves Espresso uh, on Instagram, so check her out. Link is in the description below. Um, I roast, or I roast, wow, she roasts it. I drink it two ways, uh, first with a Chemex and then with an AeroPress, um, and I'm going to let you know what I think about it. Um, thank you for watching. Sorry about the lost footage. Uh, there's one more clip that I did lose, which I'll talk about later in the video. Uh, but I'm really stoked for this coffee, um, and I have one more after this to review as well. Um, thank you so, so much uh, for sending this to me. Just so you all know, I did not pay for this coffee, um, but I am not being paid to review it. So all my thoughts and everything are my own. So I hope you enjoy it, and um, yeah, thank you again. All right, let's officially get into the rest of this review now. So I store my beans in a container by Fellow, um, which this little guy here indicates that it is sealed. So no air can get in. Um, this is a small version of it because I'm almost out of the coffee. But basically what you do is you just press the button. It lets the air back in and then you just lift off the top. And these are the beans that I have left. So you can tell that they are not roasted uh, as far as, you know, most blends are because a lot of them still have bits of silver skin intact. Um, so let me get this guy here. Whoop, slippery little sucker. Very slippery. Anyways, <laughs> so you can see these like little white bits in the middle. That's little bits of silver skin. So, uh, and you can also tell that it's a lighter roast because obviously it's a more pale color and it's not super oily on the outside. It's kind of got like a matte finish, which is how you know it's not super duper oily, um, which is indicative of uh, a darker roast. Not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. It's just how you can tell characteristics of the roast um, just by looking at it um, most of them are uniform shape you get some deformities like this one which you'd pick out before you grind um, but they're pretty much all uniform shape um, which is also more indicative of a carefully roasted and picked coffee so let's grind them up and give it a taste Okay, so for Chemex, <clears throat> I typically grind a little bit finer than what most people would do, but you can still see the bits of silver skin in there. And let's go, let's go brew. Do you want some coffee too? Eh? Do you want some coffee too? Any creeper? Yeah, that's my beautiful girl. So when you look at this cup, you can see some of the oil sitting on top. And you can tell that I pretty much drink all of it. <laughs> you can see some of the oils sitting on top of the cup which is cool. That's my cat. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it produces a pretty nice, lovely red color. My cat's freaking out. <laughs> and you can really tell in the leftover Chemex, let me switch hands here, just how red that beautiful nectar of the gods is. <sighs> I need a nap. <laughs> it's 2.21 in the afternoon and I need a nap. <laughs> 
but I don't want to take a nap because I have to be at work ready to go for 7 a.m. tomorrow. So I got to go to bed a little on the earlier side today because uh, I'm going to have to get up super early. So no napping because if I nap now, I won't fall asleep tonight. So instead, I'm going to do part two, although for you it's in the same, same video, so it doesn't matter, but part two of my coffee review. So when I test out a new coffee that I've never had before, I like to make it two ways. Chemex, which you've seen, and AeroPress. Um, I prefer the inverted method to AeroPress, so it's kind of similar to um, a French press style, but not quite as much. Um, I, if I can reach over here, have all the filters. Because I like Chemex and I don't typically enjoy French press style, I actually use two filters. Um, I haven't gotten a metal filter or anything like that yet, but uh, let me know if you want me to try that one day too. Um, but I take two filters, so when I press the coffee through, it goes through a much thicker filter than... Um, you know, normally would. So it kind of does a hybrid sort of uh, between the French press style and the Chemex style that I like. Um, but you definitely still get a lot more oils out of this than you do a Chemex. Um, so long rambling way to say I like to test out coffees both ways uh, because then you really get to know um, what brewing style that particular coffee uh, likes. So what brings out the best flavor. So, um, this isn't going to be like a how to brew or, or, or like, um, the recipe that I'm using, but generally speaking, um, when I make an AeroPress, like I say, I like to do it the inverted style, which means I take the plunger, um, put it in the top and then obviously I'll take the, the basket off. So I'll put the coffee in here. I'll fill up the water. Um, I only do it in two stages, so I do, um, you know, basically twice the amount of uh, beans that I'm using or twice the, the weight, so grams. So I usually use around 17 to 20 grams um, of coffee for this guy here. Um, so if I use 20 just for easy math, <laughs> then I'll put in 40 grams of water, let that chill out as it um, does its like off gassing, um, which for the life of me, I cannot remember what it's called. Um, and then I'll just fill it up the rest of the way, give it a quick stir and let it sit. Again, how long I let it sit kind of depends on the coffee um, that I'm using, but usually two to three minutes, I do like a bit stronger coffee. Um, and then I will put the basket with the paper in it on here, screw it on with my mug that I have um, which I'm going to use a little keep cup for. Um, I'll flip it over and then press it down. Uh, and then discard of all the equipment. So that's generally speaking the recipe that I use. So let's make that coffee now because uh, I need a caffeine boost. <laughs> It's the bloom. I remembered. It's the bloom. I'll let that chill for about 30 seconds. If anyone knows where you can get the actual stir stick that this thing comes with, let me know because uh, I lost mine and I just used the end of this dosing spoon. And now I just let it hang out here for a bit. Okay, so now that you can see all of my coffee supplies have been cleaned, one amazing thing about AeroPress is that it cleans by itself, essentially, so you just give her a good rinse and call it a day. You can definitely smell some more of the oils. If you've never tried an AeroPress or a Chemex, I suggest that you do. You can get a hands on something because they both produce such
different coffees using the exact same beans, same water, same everything. It's just so good. Oh yeah. Mm. See, most people, when they make an AeroPress, they make it um, a little more concentrated and they dilute it with extra hot water. I don't. I like a very strong coffee. This coffee's better as an AeroPress than it is as a Chemex. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. So much better as an AeroPress. Okay, so here's the thing. I lost the footage somehow. <laughs> You're probably like, Carrie, I'm so, so happy that you like the AeroPress version, but we never saw you drink the Chemex version. We saw you make it, but you never made it and drank it. Well, I did. It's just somehow I lost the footage and I'm not really sure what happened. I don't know. Um, so the Chemex in general, I'll get to the details of this coffee in just like literally 60 seconds. The Chemex in general produces a bit more of a cleaner cup. It takes away a lot of the oils, um, which for the most part I, I like. Um, but because of that, it sometimes can mute a bit of the like traditional coffee flavor. And I say that in the sense that most people who go to wherever to get the cup of coffee, they pick up a random thing from the grocery store or they go to Timmy's, I heard Canada. Um, and basically what they're tasting is the, the roast, really. You're not actually tasting much of the coffee, the inherent nature of coffee. So when you make that transition into specialty roasters who really try and bring out different unique flavors, and they don't roast their beans as long so that it doesn't lose those characteristics, a lot of times when people jump into something like that, they don't like it because you get a bit more of the acidity, the, the stone fruit flavor, whereas you lose some of that like chocolate molasses flavor um, that you get from roasting. So when you brew the Chemex, you're more likely to pick up some of those flavors, like the, the stone fruits and things like that. Whereas when you brew with um, a French press or an AeroPress in the way that I do it, you get more of those oils back, you get more of the roast back. You lose a little bit of the acidity, in my opinion. Some of you are probably screaming at me, but in my opinion, the way that my taste buds work, these are just the things that I've noticed. Um, so this, to me, literally is like 50-50. Uh, you get those fruitier flavors, but you also get a little bit more of that roast flavor um, and you get a 50-50. What's cool um, about this coffee in particular for both the um, AeroPress and the Chemex is that as the coffee cools, you actually taste a different cup. So if you've ever noticed when you drink a cup of coffee, as it gets colder, it tastes a little bit different. Well, it's because you your uh, taste bud receptors on your tongue can taste more when the um, whatever it is that you're eating is cooler, closer to room temperature. Once it starts to get too, too, too cold, you can't. Um, but if it's piping hot, you can't either. So if you've ever like picked up coffee at like a gas station or something like that, it's really, really terrible freaking coffee. But you're okay with it for like the first half of the cup because it's so hot you can't really taste it anyways. Um, so this one definitely gets like an Earl Grey flavor almost as it cools down. You do not taste that right off the bat. It's something that sort of just lingers in the back of your mouth as you drink the cup and as it starts to cool down. Um, I do notice with this one, it, it tastes better if it's brewed with slightly hotter coffee than normal, or hotter water, sorry, than normal, and then allowed to cool a little bit as it goes. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Mm. So good. Just for fun, to 
continue to tell if I love this coffee or not, which so far I do. I put a little bit of cream in there. Kind of looks like mud now. Uh, reason being um, is because sometimes I want to drink my coffee black. Sometimes I want to drink it with cream. Sometimes I even add a pinch of sugar. Usually I add sugar if I don't brew it right. So, I mean, you, you can tell here, whoop, I do not have a gooseneck kettle. I do want to get the fellow EKG one. Let me know if you like it. Mm. I'm so happy with myself. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> You're gonna be like, this, move, this, this video is like 100 years long. It's gonna be like one of the longest videos I've ever done. <sighs> I like this coffee, guys. <laughs> I really, really like this coffee. You definitely taste a bit of a, an Earl Grey flavor. You definitely taste the fact that I would say, and I, again, I, I can't speak to um, what is official, but everyone is like their ideas of a roast uh, level changes. But I would say that this is a medium light or no, a light to medium roast. It's not a light, light roast, not quite a medium roast yet. It's kind of swimming merrily in between. Um, typically the lighter the roast, the hotter the water you want. Um, and, oh, this is just so good. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. Oh, have I said that enough yet? My goodness. Okay. Definitely get a little bit of that Earl Grey as it cools down. You get up front a more traditional coffee flavor, and then those nuances come out after, which I really appreciate. I'm bummed <laughs> that I probably won't be able to have access to this coffee very much, um, but all of the links are in the description down below. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, it's Kitty Kate's Loves Espresso. I'll try and put her Instagram title here. She sent this coffee to me for free, but did not pay me to do the review, so it is all my own. I'm also just so pleased that I made a really good AeroPress. As I say, I don't have a gooseneck kettle. With the inversion method, it doesn't really matter if you have a gooseneck. It doesn't really matter if you have a gooseneck for AeroPress in general. It's more like when you make the Chemex that it matters about your pour. I will fully admit, I am not the best pour over person. Again, probably because I haven't done it with a gooseneck yet. Um, but I find when I do a manual Chemex brew, um, sometimes I have a little bit of inconsistent results. Um, and I think that comes down to the fact that um, you know, I haven't been doing it very long. Uh, I jumped pretty quickly into uh, the Chemex Automatic. Um, so, you know, with that, I'll do a full review eventually on that. Um, but with that, it does most of the work for me. There's only a couple things that I do to help it out uh, with a quick stir here and there. Um, but I'm really pleased with the way that I made this cup of coffee. Mm. See, as it's starting to cool down now, I think it's been about eight minutes since I made it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like halfway through already. I'm starting to get those tea-like qualities. Yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So, <laughs> this coffee, I think, lends itself more to immersion coffee. It's still great out of the Chemex. Uh, don't get me wrong, if you like more of an acidic cup. Um, but I think I prefer personally the AeroPress uh, version of it. Um, but check out Kitty Kate Loves Espresso. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. I hope it turns out well. Obviously this is pre-editor Carrie uh, who has literally like 35, I think I'm up to like 30 or 35 clips now of this whole thing. Um, despite the fact that when I looked at the other clips, I lost the tasting one of the Chemex. And unfortunately I did that a few days ago um, because I can't drink more than like two cups of coffee a day or I go psycho. Um, <laughs> so I don't 100% know what I said, but I know based on a couple times I've had it before, 
um, everything that I've said before is accurate. I won't go into it again. I, I have a feeling I'm just repeating myself now. So I'm going to wrap this up and say thank you very much uh, for sending me this coffee. I really, really, really love it. Um, I have another bag that uh, was sent to me as well that I'm going to taste my way through, experience that, and hopefully put maybe a more concise, <laughs> a concise video about that. Um, stay tuned. I do have a lot more tea reviews specifically to come up. Um, a very quick hint there for you. Um, I got a ton more pen reviews coming up. Lots of videos. 2020 is going to be the year for us. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. New videos come out every Monday and Friday, the occasional Q and A on Tuesdays or Thursdays. And guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.